Now, we continue with more Battleground Ontario. You know, when the election comes, it is almost certain that Ontario's deficit and debt will be front and center in a lot of voters' minds. The debt Ontario is carrying right now, get this, folks, $232 billion and growing at a rate of $22,000 a minute. Tomorrow, the Ontario branch of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation will be in the riding of Provincial Finance Minister Charles Souza to launch a new campaign to flag the debt as an issue. The CTF's Ontario Director Candice Malcolm joins us now from our Toronto studios. And Candice, you would think that Ontarian voters, nobody's going to ignore this. This has got to be an election issue. But let me tell you, what, uh, what have you got planned in general terms and why is it necessary to remind Ontario voters about this monstrous debt? Yeah, absolutely, David. You know, what, what just happened uh, in, in Quebec uh, not too long ago was a, a Liberal government that emerged that was talking about debt, that was talking about uh, the ongoing deficit and, and the problem, the consequences with carrying uh, such large debt. And, and the economy really took center stage in that election. I'm expecting it uh, something similar here in Ontario, just given how bad the finances have really gotten. Uh, Premier Wynne, uh, along with her team, uh, the prior government, the prior administration, Dalton McGuinty, uh, sort of made up a lot of excuses about why they needed to spend money, why they needed to uh, use debt to finance uh, their growth. But a lot of those excuses haven't really uh, come true or, or they just haven't really panned out. And uh, in Ontario, we have a situation where the economy hasn't really recovered. Uh, the unemployment is still very high. And, and, and we have this, this large, large debt that, that, that we're paying interest on uh, to, to the tune of $10 billion a year we're paying interest on it. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's one of those issues. It's just a screaming alarm bell uh, that the government has to do something. They have to deal with this issue. They have to address it and figure out how to finally balance the budget after after not doing so for eight years uh, and, and, and really deliver Ontario uh, what it deserves, some fiscal responsibility, some fiscal prudence. And the CTF is, is, is sort of the ones that are getting out in front, uh, ringing the alarm bell. Our campaign tomorrow is entirely aimed towards uh, really just sending a message to the government that, that this debt is, is out of control. It's scary and they have to do something to address it. They, they can't kick the can down the road any longer. And as you know, what we have seen from the Wynn government in this pre-election sort of posturing is, first there was that leak about this spending tour, $5 billion, going to run around the province and bribe people with their own money, and then this monster huge transit plan. Some say it's a warmed-over McGinty transit plan in which the current Premier, Premier Wynn, is talking about green bonds. Don't, call it, don't care what color it is, it still means borrowing, and quote-unquote revenue tools, which is, of course, the political jargon for new taxes. Exactly. You know, uh, you know ca calling it green bonds, you're, you're still going out into the into the bond market, taking on more debt, uh, saddling Ontarians with with heavier and heavier loads. Uh, David, the current uh, per capita debt level in Ontario is is about twenty thousand one hundred dollars. That's every man, woman, and child. Uh, so going out and saying you're going to uh, finance new 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 Toronto subways with with more bonds, more debt, it's just it's mind boggling. And uh, Andrea Horvath has stood up and said that they're not going to accept any budget uh, that has tax hikes uh, for the middle class. Well, you know, uh, who's going to pay off this debt eventually? It's, it's going to be middle class people. It's going to be everybody uh, who, who are going to have to pay back this debt with, with higher taxes and less services down the road. So I think it's, it's a little bit irresponsible for the government to say we're not going to raise taxes, uh, but instead we're just going to keep piling on uh, that, that massive debt. It, it, I, think, really, I really think enough is enough, and Ontario voters uh, are, are really starting to... to, to, to listen to this message and, and, and raise concern over it. You're seeing more and more stories, more and more people ringing the alarm bell uh, about, about the fiscal situation here in Ontario. And as I said, you know, Quebec has, has taken steps to, to, to move towards a more fiscally responsible government. And I think that Premier Wynne could learn something from those Liberals over in Quebec uh, or, or, or face the consequences from the electorate here in Ontario. Well, and, and then there's the, I mean, the, the, you, of course, you, you will run into this from politicians or, or those on actually all sides of the political spectrum will say, Listen, transit stuff like subways, we've got to have them. We can't pay for them up front right away. Of course, we're going to have to assume some debt. And then we get the situation, or, or which is an important question, which is, well, how much is good debt? How mu is all debt bad? You know, these fine gradations. I'm assuming you guys have come to the conclusion that, so far as Ontario is concerned, the ratios are all out of whack. Right. I mean, sure, you, you could say that there is good debt, you know, uh, 
paying for an education. If, if you're going to end up earning a lot more down the road, you can pay off any student debt. That might be good debt. But what we're talking about in Ontario is an entirely different situation. This is a government uh, that is financing budget after budget on a credit card, on a high interest uh, credit card. And, you know, as soon as those interest rates go up, they're just going to pay more and more uh, just to interest, not even to principal of that debt. So, yes, uh, you could see uh, subways as an as a investment or, or something like that. But w what we're really seeing, the reason why uh, such a big investment is needed is because of years and years of neglect from a government that hasn't properly invested in infrastructure, hasn't uh, put its money where its mouth is with, with transportation, with roadway spending. Uh, the CTF calculated uh, that the government of Ontario brings in over $6 billion a year on taxes just on drivers. So gas taxes, HST, and uh, driver and registration fees. It, it only spends $2.7 billion of that on, on roadway infrastructure. So they're already taking in way more on drivers and what they're spending. Uh, and, and, and then they're coming uh, cap in hand to, to taxpayers asking for more money. Uh, David, I, I think it's a bit rich and I, I think that Ontario uh, taxpayers see right through it. They, they don't want to give more. They, they already give enough and the government uh, is really in, in, in the only one to blame uh, for the situation they're in with transit. Candace Malcolm, uh, thanks so much for joining us from the Ontario Taxpayers Federation, uh, Canadian Taxpayers Federation slash Ontario. And look out, Charles Souza. Candace is coming to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thanks, David.